Hey, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Stephen Davidson here. Obviously, we're not shaving. That was earlier, but this is shave and kind of knife related, too. So, I got a comment in one of my earlier videos of somebody wanting me to put together a buyer's guide for uh, water stones. Uh, for those wanting to sharpen their knives and straight razors and whatnot, what I would recommend. So, I thought I'd go ahead and do that today. So, let's get started. This is my... Uh, stone collection and whatnot that I've accumulated over the years. There's been a few that's been tossed out. There's been a few I regret buying. This being one of them. Uh, when I first started out, I made the tragic mistake of getting the Norton 4K 8K combo stone. Half white and half yellow. Do not get that stone. In fact, I need to throw this piece of crap out too. This is also their Norton Flattening Stone, and as you can see, it's a P it's a POC or short for which is short for piece of crap. Don't get these, and avoid Norton because their Micron rating system is way off, and so is their grit. They don't match at all. Even if you switch to the Japanese grit systems versus the uh, American grit system, they still ain't accurate at all. And I really don't go by grit, but uh, in terms of uh, the Norton 4K, 8K, it's more like a 3K and a 6K. The Aero Micron rating puts it at that deal, so avoid Norton at all costs. You'll uh, you'll thank me later, but uh, it's a once a year stone. They don't work very well, and they also uh, they also uh, they just don't produce a good edge either. So. I'm going to show you the shortcut and what to buy and what not to buy. So, let's get started and get this bad boy out of the way. In terms of flattening stones, you saw the Norton flattening stone and how much of a piece of crap it is. This is the two things that I bought. This one I bought recently. This one I've had for years. Alright. I'll put the links to these below. These are affordable. They work great and they last for years. And they have no time... Flat, they have no problem flattening the stone. In fact, they're really fast. The first one I recommend, and you don't have to get the stone holder, um, is the Chef's Nice to Go 80 grit diamond plate. I use this to flatten and lap and round off the corners of my stone, but it's still and it does work and it's really fast. However, it's still a little rough, so I take this bad boy, which is a well worn, as you can see, 600 grit diamond plate. I also use this to build a slurry for uh, natural stones, Japanese natural stones or JNATs, the one that I have in my collection. And this really smooths out the roughness and very nice feel to the stone afterwards and whatnot. So this is what you need to flatten a stone. Now, you have to keep your stones flat and the Norton does not stay flat. That's another problem with them too. <coughs> So you want to avoid those. Uh, for you knife guys, I recommend that you get this DMT knife angle guide and this razor edge fixed angle guide. I don't know what the degree is on this one. See the brand right there? I ain't used these yet. But uh, this right here is adjustable and it'll allow you to adjust to the proper angle. And with the plastic going on the countertop, you won't ruin your stone and you'll put a really nice good edge on your kitchen and knives and hunting knives and whatnot. So yeah, I recommend them highly. Recommend these. These will make your life so much easier and be more consistent when you're sharpening a knife because it's a different ball game when you're sharpening knives versus razor blades. So those two. I'll put the links to these below along with the diamond plates and the whatnot. And I'll also put a link below to the uh, sharpeningsupplies.com uh, and Chef's Nice to Go pages for the uh, Shapton uh, stones coming up. These, I got these from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works in a mall somewhere. Uh, the white one is uh, ceramic and the, this one here is diamond and to me the diamond's better. You put your knife in, you pull through a few times and you got a sharp knife. They're decent, but 
I wouldn't call them the best. In fact, one side's marked fine and the other side's coarse. Same deal on the diamond too. And they're all right, but I wouldn't recommend them unless you just need a quick edge. Now, in terms of uh, maintaining a straight razor, this is just to maintain a straight razor. Shepton Pro Kuramaku 8K. Go here first when you need to touch one up, and then you go to a finishing stone of some kind. I've got a 912K Superstone S2 here for finishing. It's decent. It's not the best in the world, but it's not the worst either. If you got a tough beard, that's fine. Uh, usually, I prefer to finish on this bad boy here, the Shubadani Asuedo j uh, 6x2. I usually take a diamond plate, which you've seen in my videos, and build a slurry out of the stone. Pulls up the particles of the stone to make a really nice slurry. And then it puts a really good edge on there. Now, if you want something that's easier to use than the diamond plate or the J nut, rather, excuse me, there's the uh, Imperia La Rosia, and I've got a video up on that with using, I've got several videos up on that using Dr. Matt's Robin's under running water technique. This is also a good finish here. And, that's pretty much all you need, ladies and gentlemen, to finish and keep the razor going. Uh, you can also get the little barber hones. They're all over eBay and Etsy. Uh, I've had some guys tell me that they've had, uh, they've kept, some old guys told me that they've kept straight razors going for 20 and 30 years just using a barber hone whenever it needed it. And I kindly believe them a little bit, but this is also the same group of people that also, uh, uh, think the world of Norton Waterstones when they're anything but. But the Shepton Pro Kermaku 8K, a finisher of your choice, and you're good to go. That's all you need. That's all you need to maintain a stone or a razor. Now, for cutlery, you don't want to go too high, but you don't want to go too low either. Now, if you want to set levels, I recommend a 1K stone, such as the uh, Shepton Pro Kuramaku 1K. And this is hot. This is this would be as high as I would go on cutlery, like kitchen knives and hunting knives and stuff like that. I mean, any more than that would be insane. You're trying to cut something, not shave it. So, and uh, if it's really bad shape for repairs and whatnot, I usually go for the. Uh, Shepton Pro Kermaku 320 grit. Those are these are pretty much my Shepton Pro Kermaku stones. I recommend them more than I do anything else. Uh, I beat the living crap out of these stones, and uh, to me, I think they're the best stones you can get money wise. You can go all the way up to a 30k stone in Shepton, but uh, get a wide shot here. But these are my top stones. I recommend them without question. They've been wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. And as you can see, they're not cracking or crazing. And uh, they've lasted. I mean, I don't know how long I've had this one now. This one here, I've not had, but maybe for about half the time this one is. And this one here is a really good mid-range stone. If I, uh, if I get a brand new Ralph Faust and the bevel is set, which it usually is, I'll start here and then go up. But uh, pretty much the Shampton Pro Kuramaku stones, a couple of diamond plates, and, you're, and a finisher, and you're good to go. That's really all you need. You don't need to spend a ton of money on stones or whatnot. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching. Take care and God bless, and I will see you guys tomorrow for a shave of the day. Later.